All right, today I'm going to show you all how I make a simple and delicious boat bread. So, um, this bread recipe is really, really easy. It doesn't involve a lot of kneading, doesn't have a lot of ingredients. All this boat bread has is flour, water, salt and yeast. So to begin with, I mix just the flour and the water together, let it sit for kind of 10 to 20 minutes and then come back and do some more mixing. So let's start with that. I do three cups of flour. Ooh, I've already made a mess, which I always do when I make merry. Three cups of flour. Um, I'm using a mug and so I don't do the entire mug as a cup. I do about two thirds of it. And you can pretty simply just um, double or halve or whatever this recipe, depending how much bread you want to make. So three cups of flour somehow already managed to get uh, covered and then we do one and one third cup of water one and a third and then we mix so a handy tip when you're mixing is to wet I've got a little plastic spatula, and if you put just a little water on it, the uh, bread mixture won't stick to it as much when you try and mix it. And while you wait for your bread, you can do a quick stretch in the rain. <laughs> All right, the bread has been sitting for 20 minutes. Now we can add half a teaspoon of salt, just sprinkle it in there. And I use this very plain, cheapo um, brand of yeast traddy pan that you can get here in Mexico. Now, the back of the packet will tell you to add a lot. This entire packet, in fact, to a thing of bread. We will not be doing that. We will be adding only um, a third of a... Mm, yeah, about a third of a teaspoon. So. You shouldn't open it with your teeth. But yeah, we will not be adding half as much yeast as it says. Instead, we will be adding around this much. It's really not a lot. Sprinkle that in. And then we mix. You can mix by hand, but I prefer to mix using the thing just for... Uh, dirtiness sake and like I said if you wet this little thing first it makes it a bit easier to uh, mix and the way I do this mixing is kind of specific so I do a round mix then I squish and squish and squish and then do it again a round mix squish 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 and what I'm kind of trying to do is break the bread um, up into little pieces as I do it to really get everything mixed through. All right, so the bread is resting, but this first hour is very important. We want to fold the bread three times in this first hour. So um, we're going to go for a little jog in the rain, come back, do a fold, then I'll probably do some computer work, fold again. Um, normally this bread needs some time to rise so usually if I start at around 9 a.m. we can be eating bread around 3 p.m. we're back from our run 
And now I can show you how to put the first fold in the bread. Uh, usually I try and do them one every like 10 to 20 minutes so that usually you try and do all three in the first hour. I don't always make that, but yeah, that's kind of what we try and do. All right, so we're gonna lightly flour this cutting board here. Some people will just use the bench, but it gets so messy. So I like to just use the whole board. And then I put a little flour on my hands. And then we're gonna get out the dough, scoop it out in a little bowl like that. And then I sprinkle a little flour on top all right, and now we're going to do a fold. So what we do is we pull the bread away from us and then fold it over on one side. A little more flour on top. Then we pull it away from us oh, what's that? and fold it over on another side. A little bit of flour. Then we pull it away, fold it over. And the final side, pull it away, fold it over, and then you end up with this nice little kind of ball of bread. And then I use a clean um, bowl and pop it in. First fold comes away, fold it over, and then fold it this way, and then this way. And you're pulling the fold just to the point that it's almost breaking, then you fold it over. But try not to break your bread. And that's the final fold. It'll now go in here covered for you at least two hours ideally a little longer so it can proof and it'll rise and should come up to here and then we will shape our loaf now we're going to shape the loaf you can see how nicely that's risen the yeast has made it all pop up out of the bowl really nice and aerated but now we want to form it into a nice tight little bowl oh the flies are crazy today so I once again put a little flour on it and the technique I use is pretty similar to how I um, fold it so I basically just pull it out and fold it over and then I do that again. And then I do it again. And then I do it again. And then I basically just like kind of pull the edges of the bread over and lift them up to try and make the, um, I guess, the outside of the bread ball tighter. So it's tighter on the outside and nice and loose on the middle. And once I'm happy that I've got a fairly tight little ball, I essentially try and close the little seam I've made, pinch that together. Put a little more powder on top, roll it, put the seam at the bottom and put it into my bread loaf 
Um, now, the way I've done it is this is just a normal Pyrex tin and I use alfoil and baking powder to try and shape it into more of a bread-like shape. And then we cover that and let it rise. Usually for about an hour, but we'll check it and see how it looks. A good way to tell that the bread is done proofing is it's obviously filled up this pan nicely. But when I push it, it leaves a little indent and then it springs back, which is a good sign. So it can go in the oven. All right, the bread is in the oven. And as you can see, I've got a little thermometer there. So basically it's on the halfway point. Well, actually right now it's on the big flame. And in about 10 minutes, I'll probably turn it down to be about halfway between the big and little flame. On these Eno stoves, um, you have to adjust it as it goes based on the thermometer. So basically I will um, be monitoring that and trying to keep it around 200 degrees Celsius. So the bread is done and the best way to tell it's done is to knock on it and each side should make a nice hollow noise. And we just need to let it sit for a bit and then we can eat it. take a photo of me and there you have it perfect delicious bread mm, it tastes so good more <laughs>